And I suppose if I, uh, the SG is fine, if I run a status, oh, yeah, it, it does the same error as before, drive unresponsive. So, I bet it's repaired too, we just have a bad fight chip on that one. I guess if I can find a fight chip, then I'll get four working 9895s. Silicon on Sapphire chip to ET mission. And of course, while we were looking for a replacement good Phi chip, Ken could not resist opening the bad one up, looking at it under the microscope and reverse engineering it. It's an absolutely fascinating and very odd chip because it uses silicon on sapphire technology. You heard right, the substrate is not silicon, it's transparent sapphire, the kind that jewels are made of, just an artificial version. So you can see right through the chip, here you can see the golden X at the bottom of the ceramic package going right through it. Of course, Ken succeeded in reverse engineering the chip and wrote a whole article on it, link in the doodly doo. But here is a short tour by the master himself. Okay, so Ken, it took you like half a week to <laughs> figure out the chip. Well, the main problem was figuring out what the transistors are because the transistors, the contacts and the crossings all look the same, which caused me no end of confusion. The top of the chip is what connects to your microprocessor. The bottom of the chip is what connects to the IO bus. You have some control lines and you have some address lines. Probably the most interesting feature is the FIFO here to buffer data between microprocessor and the IO bus. Can you make it bigger? This one, yeah, you'll have a much better picture. So, so the two FIFOs are basically, each one is a static RAM cell, but the control logic makes it a FIFO rather than a static RAM, keeping track of where the data is going in and out. Um, and you were able to reverse engineer the cell even? Yeah, it's um, pretty straightforward. Two inverters in, in a loop um, to store the bit. Then you have a, a transistor to, to to put data in, a transistor and inverter to take so data it's out. It's straightforward to you, but to <laughs> us it's not. Right, there's a cell and it's straightforward, right? <laughs> so you see transistors in there? Yes, yeah, so where the, the metal gate transistors, so you have the gray silicon and then you have the white metal on top. And so where it crosses the arm there, that is a transistor. You've got your power and ground buses here. So this lobby thing is an inverter. So you have two inverters, pass transistors and row select lines, data coming in vertically, and there you go. Yeah, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, it's in your blog, right? You, yeah, it, you it, explain it all of that. It only took me a couple hours of, you know, what on earth is going on here? What are these people thinking? I am impressed, because I, I, I can't make sense of any of this. Another circuit I found interesting was the decoder. So there's three address lines to select eight registers for reading and writing. And then this is decoder here is what converts your three address lines into lines that go to each individual register. This register. Oh, that is the interface to the processor, to the ZAT. Yeah. Right. That wants to read and write to the chip. And it does that through registers. Yeah. All right. So it's basically you have your address lines coming in and then the pattern, pattern of the transistors will match one of the columns, mm -hmm. activate that column. And the line goes off to the register to make make things happen when you select that register. And where is the register? Oh, I think the camera is going to turn off. It's unhappy so the, with the battery. So the registers, there's a lot of them down, down near the bottom of the chip. Sl slightly different because it has to like do do more stuff than just store the bit. Uh huh. But you, it, it's you know similar. S similar, you know, storage, and then signal was off to do something. And then there's also a mini decoder here to select one of the eight uh, I/O lines, um, which you said was for the parallel pole. Ah, uh, yeah, parallel pole is always hard to so you have, re redo. So you have you know three, th three select line mm. selects coming in, and then eight lines coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so it then you have your your I.O. circuits, mm -hmm. your drive transistors. Um, so so it, it looks pretty different from your normal CMOS because of the silicon on sapphire and also because it's metal gate, um, not polysilicon. Mm -hmm. And because it's metal gate, you 
only have you know one basically one layer for routing which makes the routing a lot harder super hard so there's you know a lot of wasted space where there's just wires going around um, they go to a lot of work to avoid things crossing can you show us an end gate you were able to figure out what an end gate looks like okay if i if i remember where they're hiding so so, so yeah he, here's a here's a nand gate maybe I should, can i go more so at the top we have an inverter so you can see the the two transistors in parallel in mos and pmos um, both gates are driven by the same signal um, down here we have we have a nand gate you can see the two nmos transistors in series here Mm. And the two PMOS ones in parallel here. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's basically your typical CMOS construction. It just looks different. So these are the two inputs then? Y yeah. These are the input lines coming in, and then you've got four transistors total, and then this would be one of your power rails, and presumably this would be the other one? Exactly. Okay. And then the output's going to be in the middle. And then the output goes to the inverter. Aha. Well, thanks, Master Ken, for the enlightening masterclass. In the meantime, we received our replacement chip, so let's go back to our repair. End of chip tour intermission. 